Cryptocurrency. Like the person in your Tinder profile, only exists digitally. And the more technology advances, the better looking they both get. They both also seem like they could help you score drugs. It's 2020 and still, if you ask most people about the benefits of cryptocurrency or how they work, they would act a lot like Burt Kreischer did when he had crypto guru Anthony Pompliano on his podcast. Look what's going on in Lebanon right now, right? Everyone what's always talks about- What's going on like, with Burt Kreischer? Burt Kreischer hasn't said shit in his tour bus. Fucking, like, I am so, I'm, so I'm fucking fascinated. I've never realized <laughs> any of this. I feel like I'm just listening. Keep going, keep going. That's most people. Fascinated, nothing to add. That guy doesn't know enough to argue with you. You tell him it's awesome, he thinks it's awesome. You tell him to be scared of it, he's scared of it. Last week tonight, did an episode in 2018 where the whole point was to scare you. If you choose to invest in the cryptocurrency space, just know that you're not investing, you're gambling. This is a brand new, very complicated space and literally nobody knows how it's going to develop. Great work, Oliver. So, let's try this again. If I have one goal in this episode, it is to not crash crypto because I trust Kathy Wood from ARK Invest. Blockchain technology should be part of the next generation internet. The internet's development of, um, so you know, 91, let's say the, the consumer now can use this for commerce. Uh, all of a sudden you start to see better user experiences and interfaces. Yeah. The users want something and then it takes some time for the infrastructure to catch up, yes. right? Then the users want something else, infrastructure. Like, crypto and blockchain is following this to a T. Absolutely. It represents such a profound change that people just do not understand. So what did you do when you first got the internet? I tried setting up video calling with my long distance girlfriend and yeah, we broke up. The internet wasn't ready. Neither the Curve contributor Ryan Stout bought a bunch of fart noise makers to give to his friends at school. It wasn't a lofty goal, but it worked really well. That's where the internet was in 1995. Couldn't sustain a relationship, but great when it came to fart noises. Right now, we're just in crypto's fart noise phase. It's gonna get a lot better, guys. Good times ahead. Got a lot to look forward to. So, what I aim to do in this episode is explain how cryptocurrency works, why it's awesome, and why its future is bright if we can just get past the knee of the curve. Welcome to Knee of the Curve. This show focuses on a wide range of futurism topics. Don't get left in the past. Hit subscribe to stay up to date on how to make it rain in a cashless future. I'm a comedian, a filmmaker, and futurist, and I decided to do all those things at the same time from inside my bedroom. And that was even before the world started ending. So that's the kind of forward thinking you can expect from this YouTube channel. So, if you're at all entertained during the next 20 minutes, please come down hard on that like button and consider supporting the channel by buying some merch, becoming a patron, and of course, my Bitcoin address is linked down below. But also, sharing this with a fellow nerd or a friend, that would be huge. Okay, cash. You can hold it, smell it, buy illegal drugs with it, burn it, swim around in it Scrooge McDuck style, stick it under your mattress, not report it on your taxes, pay illegal immigrants with it, shoot it out of a gun, anonymously buy porn, or literally wipe your ass with it, but none of those things is what gives cash its value. It could though, sure. If the entire world agreed that wiping a piece of paper on your butt turns it into money, we'd have a whole new, very stinky economy based on just as much reality as our current system, where it's only banks and governments who get to pull money out of their asses. Money, physical or not, only has value because of our awesome imaginations and our belief in the system. If that belief is shattered, like what happened in Venezuela, then the entire system comes crashing down. Long story short, after the Venezuelan government just flooded the streets with worthless currency, everyone was like, why do I have all these stacks of cash that don't buy me anything? You needed a bazillion Venezuelan dollars to buy a banana. People started paying for everything in units of duffel bags. One Coca-Cola? That'll be three duffel bags of cash, please. So people started using that cash in the best possible example of irony to make wallets and purses. That is value though. If a cryptocurrency crashes, you cannot make bags out of it. Cryptocurrencies offer a way to defend against government inflation because governments don't control the money. Bitcoin is the first and most famous of the cryptocurrencies, but now there are literally thousands and that makes trying to understand this world even harder. 
I mean, how legit can money be if you can literally start one as a joke and it becomes worth millions? In 2010, this picture of a Shiba Inu dog became the internet's favorite thing to meme. So in 2013, when every initial coin offering was making millions, these guys decided to start one as a joke using the Doge meme. One day I sat down at home in, with beer and I just sat there, I bought dogecoin.com, that's a bit funny. And I, I slapped the, the, the Doge face onto a coin and just put it live. The popularity of the meme helped the coin's popularity grow as well, and it jumped 300% in the first 72 hours. As a comedian, it's awesome to see a single joke turn into hundreds of millions of dollars. The last time that happened was Jeff Foxworthy. If he's your favorite comedian, you might be a redneck. But now we have thousands of coins that are not much better than jokes. And powering all these cryptocurrencies is the underlying technology called blockchain. If you know about it, you're cool. If you've invested in it, you're ballsy. If you're a developer, you're probably rich. And if you invented it, no one knows who you are. Bitcoin's version of blockchain was created pseudonymously, which is a fancy way of saying we have no idea who it is. The inventor's pseudonym is Satoshi Nakamoto, and no one knows it could be Kim Kardashian. It's not, though. Theoretically, it's possible, even though it's definitely not her. We don't know for sure, but she did absolutely not do it. You'd want to keep your identity secret, too, if your invention was going to piss off every government ever. And since currency only works when people believe in it, what better way to solidify a belief system than with a mythical figure and a magical origin story? I mean, it's worked for every religion ever, so now we're just doing it with money. One of the problems with digital currency that Bitcoin solved is the double spend problem. You can't give one physical dollar bill to two people at the same time, and that's what makes it valuable. It's scarcity. Money is a belief system, and why would I believe something is valuable if I could just get it anywhere? Like, would you believe in a god who told you you could just make up other gods? Like, okay, well, maybe you're not in charge here. Maybe I'm the god. I could just create gods? You could see how that religious system collapses quite quickly. Same way a monetary system would collapse if everyone just made up their own money. This is a problem for digital currencies because everybody knows how to use copy-paste. If everyone just copy-pasted money into their wallets all day, no one would believe in that money, that monetary system would collapse and we would have another Venezuela on our hands minus the awesome wallets. We currently solve the double spend problem by just pretending there is no problem and trusting the governments and banks not to print too much money. But they actually don't call it the double spend problem. They call it the double spend feature. They love it. Who wouldn't? It gives them the power to print way too much money. But it does raise a pretty important question. Here's like the big question, right? Like this is something that uh, the Bitcoin community talks about a lot that I think's got a lot of credence. Why do they take your taxes if they could just edit their bank account for more money? It's weird, right? If I had a lifetime supply of cake, it would be weird for me to constantly ask you for cake. You'd be like, fuck you, you have infinite cake. And if I was like, it's just better when it's not mine. You'd be like, get away from me, you psychopath, and don't touch my cake. Lucky for us, blockchain makes it so not even the government or the banks can use the system to double spend. How? Decentralization. Instead of trusting one entity to manage the money supply, blockchain spreads the responsibility out between millions of computers. Every so often, through the power of fancy math, the blockchain software takes the agreed upon transaction data from all those computers and wraps it up in cryptography and then links it to another wrapped up cryptography block. Each block is mathematically linked to all the other blocks on the chain. If anyone tried to go in and put an extra zero in their bank account, everyone on the network would know and reject it, stopping people from copy pasting money all day. The only way to make a change in the chain would be to control 51% of the computers running the software. So we can't double spend it. It's basically unhackable. It keeps governments and banks in check. It's completely anonymous or so most people thought. But in part two, I'll talk about how the great Twitter hack 2020 was a great advertisement for privacy coins like Zcash and Monero, because while Bitcoin is anonymous, kind of, it's not private at all. The difference being privacy is like locking the door to the bathroom. Anonymity is blaming the smell on the dog. 
Part two will also cover why totally private anonymous money systems are exactly what you should want even if you're not a terrorist or a mob boss. And if you're watching this in the future, there's gonna be links to part two up top and down below. So if you like this video, come down hard on that like button. And if you leave a comment to help the algorithm, I will most likely respond. But the best thing is just to uh, share it with a friend. The patrons and YouTube members helping fund this channel, you guys are amazing. And I just posted an exclusive Zoom call with me and comedian Ryan Stout, putting the finishing touches on this script. So go check that out. And go watch Ryan's stand up. It's linked down in the description. When you subscribe, hit the bell to get notified and join me on Discord where I post view links to all my scripts so you can actually watch them develop and pitch jokes. Find me on Twitter and Instagram or just click one of these videos to stay up to date on how technology is changing everything. Thanks for watching. Peace.